We're live. So, hi, I'm Brett Fisher, and we're here at DockerCon 2018 in San Francisco with one of my friends, Laura. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell them what you do? Hey, I'm Laura Taco. I'm the director of engineering at CloudBees, which is a CI CD company. I used to be at CodeShip. We got acquired by, is this year number eight? No, I, I missed the first few. Okay. This is my one, two, three, four, fifth, fourth or fifth? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. I think I'm on five or six, or could be seven. Can't remember. Ooh. It's been enough that I- Were you I, at the first one? I wasn't. You know what? My team was there, and it coincided with the um, the 70th anniversary of D-Day. And I, yeah, long story. I promise it has a big payoff. Um, yeah, it corresponded with the 70th anniversary of D-Day, um, like the Omaha Beach celebration. And right. my family was invited. So we were in France, like on oh, yeah. Omaha Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, I'm that, not that, kidding. No, that's that, 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 that's, that's not, I'm just sitting here thinking that's higher priority. That's higher priority. Yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why I missed the first Docker con. I was actually super bummed about it. But like looking back, I'm really glad that I yeah. went to that, that ceremony. So. It's, a, it's, a, it's a probably more important yeah. lifelong story. Than, yeah, very yeah. true. Yeah. I don't have that. It's, it doesn't have the wow factor of like, I was at the first Docker con. Eh, it depends on who you talk to. Yeah, it depends, uh, <laughs> depends who you talk to. But anyway, so, so Brett yeah, and I are old timers. Yeah, and we've been captain since the beginning. So Docker and Invented that captain's program mm -hmm. from the blogger, uh, blogger, pro, speaker, blogger, speaker, community, community organizer, yeah. yeah. And then, um, and we do workshops. So mm -hmm. we, if you've been to a conference yeah. in Europe or North America, you might have seen us at a workshop. Yeah, And we, we talk yeah. about Docker and Swarm and orchestration um, is our orchestration is our jam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we go way back a little bit. Um, so you you were at the the opening ceremony yesterday. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch of announcements. <laughs> it's not the Olympics, Brett. <laughs> opening ceremony. <laughs> Oh, general yeah, session. Yeah, general session. I think of it as a ceremony. It is a ceremony. It is kind it's of like, like an we had okay. a There was a hype man. So I think one of the, maybe just to get things started about what happened yeah. at the general session yeah, yesterday. Yeah. So I'm not a big sports ball fan. Um, Yay, sports. But the, I, I should take that back. I do love football. Um, but the basketball, the Golden State Warriors, I guess, just won the championship. And the, the hype that that's man. Like the 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 hype man was uh, here hyping us all up at the very beginning of the general session, so that was pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, he came out super excited. And I thought, is this another executive I didn't know, yeah, that I, I don't know? know. Same. <laughs> I, I figured it out after like a minute because his tie was just like a little too festive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for it to, to it, be it, like a software executive, it did stand out a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a that was a really interesting start to the Docker Con. And he had a tie, so like. Yeah, he had a tie. I've never seen a Docker. Very employee. much not a yeah not a t-shirt and blazer, but like a legitimate have tie. Have a tie. So. Yeah, Ian didn't um, even have a tie today. Yeah. So yeah, no ties. No ties. Uh, yeah. So he came on, but you know what's interesting is he. He only came on once. I was wanting him to come back like over yeah. and over and like be the well, MC. Some and goals for next time. Yeah, we so. we need we don't have an MC really yeah. this year. It was just different people. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So what was announced yesterday at DockerCon? Um, I think the most interesting thing or to kick things off, Docker Desktop, which is you know, the new nice concise product word for Docker for Mac and Docker, Docker for, Windows. for Windows. Yeah. So Docker Desktop is a lot easier to say. <laughs> um, Photos in the background. Yeah. So I I really enjoy the sort of evolution of the Docker developer tool set to be something that's like really focused on the developer and your day-to-day -day yeah. productivity. So Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows is no longer just like the hacky way to get Docker if you're not using Linux. It's now like yeah. a fully mature supported developer tool. Um, so what I think is really cool about the product announcement about Docker Desktop yesterday is that they've added a GUI um, to get started with Docker. So for example, it used to be before, like maybe you need for uh, WordPress. Let's right. talk about WordPress. Yeah, Nils WordPress. Is, where's Nils? Um, so if you want to get started with WordPress or really any like web application that has some front end database, whatever, yeah. like um, stack, maybe you find a Docker Compose file somewhere or you can yeah. like look at someone else's template. But now it's really baked into the Docker desktop experience where you can just like Kind of click around, and within maybe a couple of minutes, you can be up and running. Um, yeah. With, a, with an application. And you, did, and you and you could have technically never used a GUI. I mean, never used a never, command line yeah. to do that. You could or never used Docker before. Right. Um, and I think that's sort of the. There's always sort of a cheesy skit at the <laughs> in the general <laughs> right. sessions. Um, right. But I think this one was actually really interesting, and I thought yeah. it was very well done. It was actually pretty funny, like not in a cheesy way, but actually right. funny. They were so, genuine. I, I did like. Yeah. Their... Yeah. So. 
Um, the scenario was like, oh, we have a client that needs like a .NET application and it's right. developers who've never used .NET and don't know how to use MySQL, but they were able to kind of get it accomplished. Yeah, with the with the front end um, or with the GUI in Docker Docker Desktop. I feel like oh. that's like a it's like an evolution of uh, Kitematic. Is that what that mm -hmm. was? Yeah. Like that was and just for a Docker file, and now this is finally for multi app. Solution. Yeah, and if you know, it's really interesting if you're if you're a Docker old timer, um, which <laughs> Brett and I are Docker old timers. Yes. But one of the very first open source projects I worked on in the Docker ecosystem was called Panamax, which was a um, before Docker Compose was a thing. It was like a yeah. templating um, had a Panamax YAML file or, or dot, actually it was dot PMX so was like our own file, um, our right. own file extension. But the whole point was like application templates and. Um, so it's really nice to see a lot of those UI things and those very early developer tools and those ideas that we had with the Panamax tool now be injected into all of the, like Docker Hub has the image layers. There's yeah. like, um, yeah, now with the, the templating and, and making Docker Compose files a little bit e more easy but you get to no be credit. shared. Yeah, I get yeah. no credit. It's fine. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not in it for the credit. I just want no people respect. to be no able respect. to, <laughs> <laughs> I just want people yeah. to be able to use it. it. I, yeah, you just want it to be easy. And now, now it's easy. a yeah. weird, twisty way over four we years. Yeah, we got, got a, here. We yeah. finally got here. So that's a really, really and, cool. and it works on Mac and Windows, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, Yeah, it's it, part of Docker Desktop. So yeah. I think, um, you know, one, one conversation that I think I had on Twitter with someone was about, um, like Docker for Linux desktop yeah. tool because that's Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows are meant to sort of supplement or, or like make make it so that you don't have to get yeah. get a VM and lo you know log into AWS or something and have a Linux VM in order to use Docker. But the Linux desktop experience doesn't really exist because it's there um, right. already. So I'm curious right. when there's going to be Docker desktop for Linux. I heard that this is the year of Linux on the desktop. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> It was actually, uh, yeah. what was it they said in LA? We were actually in Open Source Summit together last year, and they mm -hmm. said that uh, the year of the the year of Linux already happened, yes. and it's on. It's just mobile, because yeah. because mobile oh, mobile Android, Android, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mobile Linux is more popular, so that we, we don't even care about desktop anymore because mm -hmm. mobile was the, mm -hmm. they won mobile. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I guess that's the part of the thing is like Linux, like we need all these other things in Windows and Mac, right? We yeah. need a virtual machine to run Linux. We need. Yep. We need it to act transparent. So there's a lot of tooling that Docker has to do in the background. Mm -hmm. And on Linux, they don't need any of that. So yeah. a, a Linux for a Docker desktop, desktop for Linux really, would it just be a GUI. It would just, yeah, I think it it's just like anything. a GUI. It's just like what Kitematic was, maybe. Right. You know, like distilled down. There's not that not not the the thin VM or whatever yeah. you know virtualization layer that would be necessary. But and just, it would be an installer tool. I guess mm -hmm. it would be like in the background an apt automatic apt-get update for your. Yeah, and just like package. a nice way to connect with your yeah. your registry accounts as well. I think mm. that's the one really cool thing that Docker Docker Desktop the does is menus. that you just like yeah. you log into Docker Hub and you can basically push to your Swarm right from the desktop. So yeah, and that's a workflow that's like agnostic to whatever uh, operating system you use as a developer. Um, yeah, it's just a dev, dev workflow. So yeah, and that and that um, now is better. So the GUI tool, I forget the. the the GUI tool, what's the timeline? There's a beta, right? Beta.docker. Beta, Beta.docker.com. Yeah. Um, so you can get access to it right now by signing up for the beta. And so beta.docker.com is just like worth periodically checking like every three months. There's always months, something there. There's always, it's always new. It's always the yeah. new latest beta thing. So you can um, go to beta.docker.com and get access to that. Yeah. Um, and then there's other new stuff that's also at that beta site. Mm -hmm, like yeah. we got um, Docker Enterprise Edition. Kubernetes and Windows. Kubernetes and Windows. Yeah. Which we don't yet have in Kubernetes Upstream. So like that's Kubernetes Upstream has alpha support for Windows. Um, and from my understanding, the um, Microsoft and Docker and the Kubernetes community kind of work together. Um, so the Docker engine is sort of going to backfill some of the functionality right. that's not yet ready for like the heavy lifting in Kubernetes Upstream until it's ready. And then they'll kind of back off and, and let Kubernetes Upstream take take the lead on right. Windows support, but that's a... They didn't really talk about what that was, mm -hmm. but yeah, so it works, and you can <laughs> do works, it if you yeah. have Docker EE. Yep. Um, and so that beta, no, that just is that just working, or is that a beta also? I can't remember. I'm not Go sure. Go to beta.docker.com, and yeah, whatever out. the list is there. Read the docs. I signed yeah. up, and it just, I signed up, and then it just went away. Like, it didn't actually give me anything to download, it just said, okay, thanks. Oh, uh, okay. So Are you maybe, an EE customer? No. Yeah, probably why. Oh, well, no, I... We have our captain's license. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. Um, and then the other thing was um, federation. Yeah. Right. So the swarm, the swarm of swarms, mm -hmm. the Kubernetes of Kubernetes and Docker EE. So yeah. now you could have 
um, different regions with different uh, clusters. So different cloud provide, yeah, multi cloud, multi cloud, multi region, and even within cloud, multi region, and it's super easy. So it's basically a fork of the Universal Control Plane UCP. That's the normal um, Docker Enterprise Edition control pl plane. Yeah. Control plane. Control plane. Which is the single pane of glass to look into all of the infrastructure that you're managing. Um, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool demo. Yeah. Can't lie. I mean, uh, it's one of those demos where you keep thinking, okay, this is this is total demo, not yeah, that it like, can't be that easy. easy. It's too easy. Drag and drop, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just deploy something to the world. Yep. Um, but then yeah. uh, it, it's just not. It's I mean, it, it obviously there's other complexities involved, but it's once the tooling is in place, uh, yeah. once you have your stuff your stuff built and working, mm -hmm. like that's the daily application workflow that I think we're all doing. And yeah. um, in fact, in, in my session this week. One of the themes a lot is basically building a swarm and how do you what's your mm -hmm. day to day look like when you're building out all these different tools, and it, it really the whole thing could have just been a list of the same command off over and over again yeah. because you're just deploying YAML files that have mm -hmm. the descriptions of everything and you're just doing that over and you're doing that over, yep. and um, the fact that you know we all talk about Docker files and and how like Docker containers are make it easy to deploy mm -hmm. apps and consistent for, consistently able to deploy apps and then. We kind of don't really talk about that experience of this YAML definition, whether you're in Swarm or Kubernetes, mm -hmm. like that thing just becomes a very normal workflow for everyone. And how before those, we forget that just like a few years ago, those YAML files were actually, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of lines of shell script yeah. or like a ton of Ansible stuff and a yeah. whole lot of pause waits waiting for things to magically, yeah, it just, yep. We forget how Not bad it was yeah. very just a few years ago. So yeah. that's the that's the Jenkins story. So I've been understanding Jenkins a lot more. So I oh, had, okay. you know, I had used Jenkins before when I worked at HP, but then I've been working at CodeChip and we right. don't use Jenkins at CodeChip, we use right. CodeChip. Um, so kind of getting reintroduced to Jenkins tool and understanding the differences between like the old Groovy pipelines versus the new declarative pipelines. Like yeah. you can see the evolution of like the development community and best practices from like, right, those super long scripted stuff to yeah. just like something that's declarative and, and, and nice and, and tidy. Yeah, we're learning together the right way, mm -hmm. to, what things need to be declarative and, and that that's more repeatable yeah. than just a yep. bunch, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I've got a, I dipped my toe in it a little bit um, with some customers where we've see, I've seen that new declarative model and yeah, that's, that's very cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's pretty similar to what CodeChip like uses for our YAML files okay. as well. Like, you know, the syntax is a bit different, but like the, the heart is, is right. in this. It's there. So yeah, it's that's cool. probably very similar to the experience of the YAML files between Swarm and Kubernetes. It's like they have the same ideas, mm -hmm. but the way that you actually type it out is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that was another interesting announcement, um, kind of a, an interesting twist of events, because I think Swarm has gotten, and Docker has gotten a lot of flack for being like, you know, vendor lock in -y. Okay. Um, because of EE, and you do need a license to operate EE. Um, you get support, you get some, some stuff, it's not just the right. license. Um, but that using EE, you can use Docker Compose files, so the stack files, yeah. to deploy to either stack, to either Swarm or to or Kubernetes. Kubernetes. But if you have a Kubernetes file, you can only deploy to Kubernetes. So that's a kind of an yeah. interesting um, shift in the way that Docker is choosing to, to be very agnostic and right. um, kind of do that transformation for the user behind it, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting on that too, because that, that those files, right, are becoming increasingly more important. Like mm -hmm. we all started with just compose like Docker files and yeah. probably some people had shell scripts, right? And then, uh, you know, Swarm on the desktop and Kubernetes on the desktop with Minikube started becoming mm -hmm. a thing. But then that meant we all had to have those YAML files to develop locally. Yeah. And so I keep seeing people coming out with solutions on yet another way to de run Kubernetes locally for development purposes, yeah. right? And uh, I've not seen anything yet that's as easy as like Docker Compose up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and so Docker Compose still, I feel, I feel like for me, like still is a better developer it's the, story. It's the canonical developer. Tool yeah. For yeah. Even, even if you're not using Swarm or Kubernetes, just like it just allows yeah. you to have a yeah. network that things work. And it would be interesting to see if that, like pushing it through the pipeline, like it starts at the developer, it pushes through to the CI/CD, mm -hmm. and then whether you're doing Kubernetes or Swarm. Yep. If that file becomes more of a standard, more important mm -hmm. than just a developer tool, uh, even into the potential into the Kubernetes community, because I know, I mean, obviously, Kubernetes files are a little mm -hmm. more descriptive, uh, so there's more to them. Yeah. And of course, that's friction. If we have to have, to have more lines than anything, eventually developers will find an easier way to do it. Mm -hmm. Another layer of abstraction that yeah. has less work. There's no way to solve 
uh, you know, problems Laziness. caused by well, <laughs> problems caused by one layer of abstraction, then adding another layer of abstraction That's on right. top of it. So That's right. we will find a way to do that. Um, yes, another standard. What yeah. we need is another standard. Yeah. Um, so, and then there wasn't really an announcement around this, but I feel like similar to uh, the visual, like the vis we're talking about Compose, all these other yeah. Compose tools. There's actually another tool that um, Gareth and some of the people, some, some of the engineers at Docker came up with. It's called mm -hmm. Docker App, and, and they mm -hmm. talked about it this week in a session, but they haven't really publicly announced mm -hmm. it. I didn't check the blog to see if it's out as a blog uh, post yet, mm -hmm. but if not, we'll like we, we're gonna. I'm sure I'll be talking about it here soon. But it's another it's another command line they're experimenting with that allows easier use of com compose files okay. and allows you to put those compose files in images and then use the image distribution methods as a way to get composed on. files around. Yeah, yeah. So it, it basically makes Docker Hub now a kind of composed like, distribution tool. Yeah. yeah which yeah. means you can version it, you can uh, you know you can do the layering thing yeah, and all that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. it obviously it's gonna be a very small image. But that's a that's a really cool interesting it's almost like a hack to me because I'd never thought of Using the Docker Hub as a yeah. composed file format. I mean we all we've kinda of done that all along. We all mm -hmm. could have made Docker images that had nothing but a composed file in it. True. And then extracted it somewhere else, and then used it. Yeah. But nobody did that. Yeah. And uh, it just this year they sort of launched this new open source project. It's mm -hmm. it's all open source. So we'll see. Yeah, it's called Docker cool. App. Uh, I think you can go to GitHub.com/slash/docker/slash/app. I believe that that's open source now. So. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, what's on the docket for the rest of the day? Moby's cool hacks. Moby cool hacks. I hear we're gonna have some really cool stuff. Um, I heard. Oh, one thing that happened. <laughs> and things that happen in space, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I heard that Docker is being used to shoot down meteors. So I'm yeah. very curious to see what NASA. That sounds doing. like a movie. So yeah. maybe maybe Moby Doc will be in a movie and like. Mm -hmm. That would Moby and Molly will Moby be in hanging. Space. <laughs> I, I can see it. Moby and Molly in space. Yeah. In good. space. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so we have the Cool Hacks, and if you haven't been to a DockerCon, Cool Hacks is an, an end of the conference, uh, three winners from a contest, yeah. basically, what's their coolest hack on containers mm -hmm. using Docker, um, and it's always a fun time, because it's always something really interesting. Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft. Like showing your controlling Docker containers, your... and yeah, I think it's called DockerCraft. Um, yeah. That's an oldie but goodie to look, to look up yeah. in a couple of years Or ago. updating a drone in mid-flight, updating the operating system with yeah. Docker while it's still flying and not crashing, yeah. right? That's really yeah. cool. Uh, and then tomorrow we have the repeat sessions, which is the last day where all the high, best voted mm -hmm. workshops and talks all get repeated. Mm -hmm. And I hear you're doing yours tomorrow, so yeah. congratulations. Thanks. Are you doing yours I, tomorrow? I did get Brent? I did get news that uh -huh. I'm doing mine tomorrow. Yeah, pretty good. So we get to re we get to do have a do over mm -hmm. um, or a, a another chance to fail, basically, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how you look at. It. Yeah, um, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah, right. we'll be doing that. When's yours tomorrow? Nine a.m. Nine. Ooh. Early, yeah, early that's fine. Day. I'm super jet lagged, so I, I've been waking up at like 5:30 a.m. So by nine, I've had like three coffees and some breakfast already. So yeah, so you'll be in there with the, the early risers, early risers. Yeah, tonight. yeah. The party was last night, so that's true. there's hopefully, no party tonight. Hopefully, people get some rest and come back tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully. So. Well, okay. Well, this was fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we got to hang out in this uh, cool little room. You can see like the black lights. Yeah, there's a black light. Like, there's also got, like, this like container maps, and like if you look around the room, you see this white. What are those, like fluorescent markers? I guess they're just fluorescent, like paint markers on a piece of glass. And yeah, and then we've yeah. Yeah, we got stuff over there. Yeah, it's a nice little room. It's pretty cool. It's room. kind of fun. Yeah. So thanks for watching, yeah. and we'll see you on the next uh, YouTube Live.